If you make your own Max for Live devices and are interested in sharing your work with others, then this guide is for you. It is a collection of suggestions that we recommend in order to be considerate to anyone who will be using your device, including yourself. Besides the technical knowledge that one must have in order to make a functioning Max for Live patch, there are a few other aspects for developers to consider that can make or break the experience of using Max. This guide will provide you with suggestions to effectively avoid common pain points for Max for Live device users so that your Max for Live instrument or effect may be enjoyed to the fullest extent. Patcher Structure This is a style guide for the organization of your patch. If someone were to press the edit button on your Max for Live device in live, they should ideally be presented with a clean, legible patch that can be clearly understood, learned from, and even reused. Creating a visible hierarchy to a patcher is essential for patch legibility, both by organizing the data flow and by using encapsulation and abstractions. To encapsulate a group of objects as a subpatcher, select the objects and go to Edit Encapsulate in the Max menu. Or use the key command Shift Command E, or on Windows, Shift Control E. The focus should be on making a readable and reusable patch. Try to encapsulate the parts of the patcher that you are doing the actual computational processing. You can also think of each subpatcher as a function of the program. The contents of an encapsulation should always be related to the same function. This makes things easier to read, especially if you want to read it, and to copy even if you don't know how the insides work. Abstractions are typically used if the function will be reused in the same device or if you think someone else might want to use the function in other situations. If the function is only used once, a subpatcher is sufficient. To create an abstraction, create a subpatcher containing an inlet and an outlet. Then go to File, Save As and give it a memorable and useful name and save it to a location in your Mac search path. For the abstraction to appear in the Max file browser, it needs to be tagged accordingly. Right click in the background of the unlocked abstraction patcher and select inspect a window. Then type abstraction into the tags field in the description section. Now it will appear in your file browser. Presentation mode allows you to arrange and resize user interface objects in your patch independently of their functional position and size in patching mode. You can toggle between these two modes with the key command Option Command E or on Windows Alt Control E or by clicking the presentation icon on the toolbar at the bottom left corner of the patcher window. Here's what that translates to in Max for Live. Presentation mode is what your Max for Live device looks like in Live's device view. Patching mode is what you see when you open the Max for Live editor and switch to patching mode. To ensure that your device loads in Live in presentation mode, you need to make sure that the device patches inspector is set to open in presentation. When opening up a patcher in the Max for Live editor, the data flow path should be visually clear and it should be easy to determine where any given process is happening. Each component of a patch should be in a relevant area grouped with other similar things. This is not only considered for anyone interested in understanding how your patch works, but can also be helpful for you to remember how the patch is constructed if you return to it at a later date. It's also useful for debugging. The most common use for segmented patch cords is in the case of a loopback connection. Segmented patch cords can also help with the visual cleanliness of the patch. However, be mindful of the fact that overlapping connections can disguise the signal flow's origin and destination. 
consider encapsulation as the main organizational method whenever possible. Try to avoid large numbers of send and receive pairs. This is not recommended for the device in general and especially in the same patcher, as these objects tend to make the patch more difficult to read. Using the trigger object is a good way to avoid fanning out a bunch of patch gods. There are plenty of instances where triggers aren't needed, but you could make use of them even in those situations. It's nice to be able to look at a patch and see the exact order of how things happen, just in case you move things around or add something to the patch. Another way to structure your patch is with the use of comments. Here are several uses of comments for organizational purposes. Along the top of the patch window, you can give your patch a title. Just to the right of the title, you can briefly summarize what the patcher does. Below this, you can add a description field to go into more detail if needed. Comment patcher elements as needed, but be mindful with the amount of comments in the patch. For example, any information that can be found in the Max reference documentation does not need to be reiterated in the comments. For input and output, it can be useful to give an indication of the data type. When you're done with the patch, be sure to remove any objects that do not directly contribute to the functioning of the device. This often includes unused UI elements and messages or print objects used for debugging. Make sure that you name abstractions and sub-patches with something useful. One way to differentiate abstractions is by naming them with a prefix related to the project followed by a dot. For abstractions that use signal input and or output, consider using a tilde. It is recommended to use Live's native theme colors. You can also create your own color scheme for each device. This goes for the device UI as well as the patch itself. Consider making a style for your patch or using a pre-existing one. You can alter the border color for objects that should stand out notably send receive pairs and sub patches or abstractions a spotlight on some max concepts that are specific to max for live it is good to be aware of these concepts when intending to share or distribute a device once you've finished patching your max for live device remember to freeze it Freezing a Max for Live device is similar to Live's collect all and save function. It prepares the device for distribution by making sure that it contains all the files it needs to operate. Max analyzes your device to find any files it uses and consolidates these files within your device. When a frozen device is then opened on another user's computer, the files used by the device are referenced correctly. These files, referred to as dependencies, are most commonly sub-patches, audio files, and image files, but can also include JavaScript code or third-party Max externals. Failing to freeze a device before sharing or distributing it can often result in a device malfunctioning due to broken file references. To freeze the device, click the snowflake icon in the device toolbar, then save the device. Inspector. You can set your device to always open in presentation mode in the following way. In an unlocked patcher with no objects selected, right click the patcher background and select Inspector Window. This will open the Inspector Window for the patch. Then go to View, Open in Presentation and toggle on. Note that this option is only available in the inspector window that pertains to the whole patch. You can toggle the inspector window for individual objects by selecting the object first and then using the key command, command plus I, or on Windows, control plus I. Project window. 
You can view your device's dependencies in a dedicated file manager window by clicking the Show Containing Project in the toolbar. You can share data between Max for Live devices. In these cases, the Max namespace is shared, but the signal processing space is independent. The namespace in Max is global. When you have objects that have names associated with them, such as send, receive, call, or buffer, each Max for Live device processes its audio data separately. If you want your named object to be local to a device, Use three dashes to start the name of your buffer, call, or send and receive pairs. When your patch is initialized, it will replace the three dashes with a number that is unique to a device. Here's some recommendations for the effective use of device parameters. By providing consistency with the way that live parameters work natively, the Max for Live device will feel familiar and easy to use. There are several ways to name a parameter in a device, which can be set using the object's inspector. There's the short name for the UI object label. There's the long name for automation and MIDI mapping. And there's the scripting name for the use with the pattern preset objects. Keep the short name short enough to avoid the label being truncated, whereas the long name can be more descriptive and use full words. An example of this distinction would be ENV and envelope or freq, F -R -E -Q, and frequency. Live.UI parameters can be set to one of three main types in the object inspector. Integer values in the range of 0 to 255, floating point values with no range restriction, and enum, an enumerated list of items. Keep in mind that integer type values will display a stepped automation lane in Live's automation view. This is usually desirable for parameters that use discrete values only. Furthermore, it is possible to set parameters type to float while setting its unit style to integer. In doing so, the parameters value will be stored as a floating point number, but displayed as an integer. Parameters can be made available for automation in live. By setting the parameter visibility to automated and stored in the parameters section of the object inspector. By default, the automation parameters in new Max for Live devices are called live.numbox bracket one or live.dial bracket three. These default parameters should be changed to meaningful names. Ideally, the parameter name as displayed within the UI itself. This allows users to identify them easily in the list of automation parameters within Live. You can check the automation parameters by loading your Max for Live device in Live, switch to Arrangement View and toggle Automation Mode, key command A, and open the list of automation parameters for the track that contains the device. Saving Parameters Usually, Users of Max for Live devices expect all device parameters to be stored and recalled correctly with a live set or a live preset. Otherwise, the device is of limited use when customized. To check this, open the AMXD file in Live, change some parameter values, and then save and close the live set. Reopen the save live set to verify that the parameter settings are recalled correctly. If a parameter is not being saved with your live set, it could be one of two issues. Issue one could be the UI object and that you're not using live.ui objects. Try using the designated live UI objects instead since they have been designed to work seamlessly with live's mapping capabilities. They can be automated in live and allow for an initial value to be saved when the device is instantiated. Issue 2 
could be parameter visibility is set to hidden. Check that this is either set to either automated and stored or stored only. This attribute can be found in the UI objects inspector window in the parameters section. Note that there are some cases in which you may want to have the parameters set to hidden. Usually when it affects other Maxfly parameters, this will prevent problems with overloading lives undo buffer and will also limit issues with preset storage. Hot tip, in Max, go to view parameters to open a window in which you can edit attributes for all parameters at once. What your device is and what it does may seem obvious to you as the device developer, but it is helpful for everyone else to be shown more explicitly in case they don't fully understand its capabilities right away. Try providing some versatile presets or even a demo live set that showcases your device. This will help other users to understand the purpose and characteristics of your device. Consider what the default sound of the device should be when first loaded in order to best showcase the capabilities or personality of your Max for Live device. Default parameter values can be set in the object inspector in the parameter section by using the initial enable option and setting an initial value. Infotext. Infotext is displayed in the live info view when hovering the mouse over a parameter. This helps users understand the meaning of individual functions of your device. Infotext can be added to live UI objects in the object inspector in the description section. Check that it works correctly by loading your device and then hover the mouse over parameters to check that the info text shows up correctly in Live's info view. MIDI mapping. Making parameters MIDI mappable will allow users to control parameters with any MIDI controller. This is most important for all parameters seen in the UI when your Max for Live device is first open in Live. The secondary parameters that are not immediately visible on instantiation, because they either appear in a pop-up window or fold-out view or tab, should also be considered for MIDI mapping. To check this, load the device, enable MIDI mapping mode in Live with the key command, Command plus M, or on Windows, Control plus M, and check that all the device parameters have a blue overlay. If the parameters are not mappable, it may be that you are not using live.objects or that the UI object parameter visibility has not been set to automated and stored in the inspector. The device can be mapped to push by using the live.banks system. We'll explain more about this in an advanced video.